Hi, how's it going? How's hey, Jake, how are you doing? <laughs> I, I love having veterans on the show. So, you know, the Marine to the Army guy. Palestine. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So you guys Thanks, had that Eric. like Pre level of camaraderie. It's good. Yeah, I appreciate your service, Eric, and oh, uh, Semper Fi from uh, Service in the Marines. I know. Right. It's the thing today. This is what it we got. <laughs> I love every it. Every show you'll have. Oh, every show. Every show you'll be you'll be surrounded by at least one veteran besides the host of the show and Chris in the control room, <laughs> who is probably the busiest man on earth right now, dancing around getting everybody together. Yeah, the man is amazing. Oh, I oh. could imagine. Props yeah. to you, Chris. Yeah, Props Chris wins. Chris. Everybody, give Chris a round of applause if you're watching. Push that like button yes, just Chris. for Chris. Chris. Chris deserves <laughs> it. He's killing it out there. Uh, so, Jake. You have, you're doing two incredible things. Uh, one, we'll, we'll give you kudos for, well, both we'll give you kudos for. We have a video for the other, but I want to talk real quick. You jumped into an incredible mission when the pandemic started. You heard that there was a need for folks to be, their children to be tutored that are out there as medical professionals who obviously can't be at home, need to be home, to, you know, being out at the hospital treating the coronavirus yeah. folks. So what made you jump in and start just picking up the, you know, be the tip of the spear and charge the hill? Yeah. Uh, well, for one, probably the military context gave me a lot of the, you know, improvise, adapt, overcome uh, mentality uh, that when a challenge comes up, why not hit it head on? And uh, it was a combination of two things. One, I'm an adjunct uh, professor at the University of Utah, as it is. Um, and then my uh, my good friend Lauren came asking me, well, why not do this? Uh, why not uh, put together a few courses based off what you're doing for Chalk and your company um, so that you can be an educator for the youth of our nation? Uh, and I said, that's a heck of an idea. Let's do it. Uh, so I put together a few courses, put them on the website, taught a few uh, of the youth uh, across the nation. And it was absolutely wonderful uh, teaching them just the basics of environmental sciences, atmospheric sciences, a little bit of more physics, engineering, but uh, they can get their hands dirty. They get the wow effect going, you know, uh, when you were in school or if you remember. And so Rose of the Challenge took it and uh, it's been it's been just fun ever since. Awesome. So now we'll jump into I, I mean, I love that you did that, man. It's so good to see, again, a veteran leading the way, which I absolutely will always <laughs> love, uh, which is just kick ass. You just pick it up. And I love that you talk about adapt and overcome a lot of our guests especially yesterday we had yeah. the resilient Kirsty Enos on Lisa Bodenberg who always talks about the marine mindset and of course who could not love Rudy Reyes who basically just left be walking out of here and wanted to like paint the house and go <laughs> save like orphans uh, and so it was great to hear you talk about this because this mentality our mindset is we did, we're selfless and I and we're going to talk about leadership with our next guest so it's great we're talking about it here because to me, leadership is so key. And it's good to see our veterans just selfless, like, hey, I'm gonna do it. I'm a professor, I got this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna solve this problem. So you're a CEO of a company. So we're gonna show a little clip to get folks in a little bit about your company. I love it. We'll make uncomfortable faces till it <laughs> That's fine, I'll wait. <laughs> Imagine a world where your food is grown organically and locally, no matter the weather. Where we have enough water to supply the world without drying our lakes and rivers. At Chalk, we are creating the world's first water and power cogeneration system. Our system creates water and electricity while simultaneously dehumidifying and controlling the temperature of greenhouses. The result? Well, you can imagine. I guess our episode should be about the earth and the election because that's what we're, we seem to be yes. covering, right? Hemp, CBD, pot, and now we're going to talk about, you know, water and, and saving our planet, which is key because we talked about that yesterday with Rudy. So, Chris, where did you come up with this, man? This is, uh, again, another amazing thing. See, where did you come up with this concept? Yeah, uh, the concept, it, it truly was how do, let, how do we pioneer something that's so simple um, and make it uh, something revolutionary. How do we make it go from A to B uh, and use nature as our driving machine, uh, creating a system that creates water and power? And so the story really, uh, it came from when I had a, a dehumidifier in my basement when I was living in DC, it was my last assignment in the service. Um, and I was curious, well, you know, let's, 
let's create a system that can produce not just water uh, with moisture and humidity in the atmosphere, but let's let's create energy at the same time in parallel. How do we do that? As that's never existed before. Um, and then the uh, you know, the potentiality in, in terms of that vision, we just ran with it uh, to where we are today, uh, which you just saw in that clip. Uh, so that's really the, um, the, the premise of the idea and where it came from. I love this and thank you so much for joining us because you were like just such a dope guy. Um, but <laughs> I want to I want to know because like this is so cool. You do so many cool things. I love just like the entrepreneurial like spirit that you have. It's incredible. Um, where did what do you think like the future? Uh, because I know millennials and Gen Z's, we are worried about our planet. We can yeah. see that it's dying even in, you know, being in uh, what is this called? Coronavirus. We are in a isolation. We're self isolating. OK. Yeah. Um, with all of this happening, we've seen the air is cleaner, water is cleaner. Just in general, what can we do on a daily basis? Two, two part question. What can we do on a daily basis to help our planet? And what do you see as like the future for water energy? Oh, that's a hard one. Uh, I wish I could answer the answer <laughs> immediately to what we could do on a daily basis. Um, and you know, the first one I would say is live within your means that you have um, available to you. So we know that our water tables are being saturated. We know that our food supplies are having shortages right now. I mean, look at the import export within the nation. I mean, we're seeing pork export shortages right now um, go out. We're seeing beef import shortages come in. Um, and so how can we live within our means while we're in the pandemic and, you, and under our isolation? Um, but also, how can we look to pioneer? How can we look to take what, uh, I guess the answer to your second part of the question is, how can we look to take you know, what we use on an everyday basis and uh, the term I want to use is optimize, but how do we take that in such a way that we live within our means so that we're not straining the environment? Uh, do we need to, uh, you know, it's a, it's a drink, you know, 15 glasses of water per day. Do we need the certain shake? Do we need to uh, be in a social setting that would expose or put risk, not just to others, but to our environment? Um, and so I, I know we're seeing a lot of that geographically right now in terms of the environment. And I, I know that we can already see the ramifications of, you know, the earth isn't shaking as much uh, in terms of less vehicles, less traffic, less even foot traffic uh, uh, across a lot of our tectonic plates that aren't being disturbed too much at the moment. Um, so there's a myriad of different factors we can use to contribute right now. Of how can we give back? How can we at least do our part? How can we you know, provide recycling means? How can we recycle glass, plastic, cardboard, et cetera, um, and then provide water where it's needed most um, to the people that don't have it and to our agricultural producers that need it? Great. I mean, I agree with Pepe and you. Uh, no, dude, you are dope. Like, you just dropped tectonic <laughs> plates in a sentence. And I'm like, crap, we just talked about tectonic plates. This is going awesome. So what we're going to need to do, I'd love to have you back on, Jake, and go long on this topic with you. Uh, just to just deep dive. Because I think it's so important that we understand what we can be doing because we're leaving this earth behind, right? We all have generations of children, and we want to leave it in a better place. And you're right. It has been great to see the environment basically heal, seeing the canals in Venice clear with dolphins in them, right? Dolphins. Sorry, Disney. I watch too much <laughs> Disney, folks. I can't help it. I have to say dolphins. Uh, but it's it's just incredible to see. So I'd love to come back, have you come back and kind of deep dive into this topic because I think people need to know about it. So before you go, can you just plug every plug away, let people know how they can find out more information, and then we're going to get you back on ASAP. Would love that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, by the way. Um, so in terms of our website, please go to our website at chocktech.com, C-H-A-A-C-T-E-C-H.com. Uh, we do have a donation campaign right now. We, we have partnered uh, with our nonprofit Wells of Life partner um, so that all of your donations will have a tax deductible contribution to, uh, to, the, to clean water access in Uganda um, as well to our campaign and to our mission. But uh, truly, thank you so much for having me today. It was such a pleasure. I can't wait to be back on the show. Thanks, my friend. Semper Fi, we'll see you real soon.